Uh, in Exodus 21, 23 or 22 through 25, if you want to go all the way to the end of the of the legislation, it's talking about two men are fighting and um, and they accidentally injure a pregnant woman. There are two outcomes for which we have penalties uh, prescribed. One of the right. outcomes is if this causes the woman to miscarry. And the fine is that the husband imposes a fine on the uh, the other gentleman, right? Um, who's not a gentleman, obviously. Um, and the other outcome that is addressed is if the injury causes the death of the pregnant woman, in which case the text says you will give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, bruise for bruise. So this is what's known as talionic justice. Uh, whatever happened to the victim, you do the same to the perpetrator. And so this is the death penalty. And there is uh, there have been attempts to try to reread these two scenarios as referring to what happens to the fetus, where the first scenario is this injures the pregnant woman and causes her to give premature birth. But and and the Hebrew is a is a little cryptic here. Uh, it says, and, um, and there will not be harm. Ason is the word in Hebrew. And uh, it, so the, the text literally in, in Hebrew says, uh, two men are fighting and uh, they hit the woman, the pregnant woman, and her uh, children go out and no harm occurs. Uh, and so this is sometimes interpreted to refer to premature birth where no harm actually comes to the prematurely born child. And then the other scenario is if the prematurely born child actually passes away. And so this would, um, I would suggest, be an awful reading of this text for a couple of different <laughs> readings. Uh, the first is that if this causes the premature birth of the child, but no f further harm comes to the child, there's no material loss. And that would violate the entire logic of the legislation of the Hebrew Bible, which imposes fines where there is material loss. So there would be no penalty at all if two men uh, caused a woman to give premature birth to a healthy child. So that's nonsensical. Um, right. And the uh, the and people will argue that well, the verbal root here yatsa, which means to go out to depart, that is used to refer to natural birth. And and yes, it can be used to refer to natural birth. I don't know that it's used to refer to premature birth anywhere, but it can also be used to refer to a miscarriage. Um, and so that's not determinative, noting that we have this verbal root yatsa. And also the word for child there is in the plural, which I suggest may indicate this is an abstract plural. And so we're not actually referring to, it's not like this law only applies to twins. Um, <laughs> I'm suggesting this is uh, the, you can have, uh, you can use the plural to take a noun and render it an abstraction. And mm. so her pregnancy leaves her. In other right. words, she loses her child. So that would be um, a, a le perfectly legitimate reading of that plural form of that noun. So the other reason that this is clearly a wrong interpretation of this passage is that we know exactly where the author of the covenant code, uh, Exodus 21, got this law from, because they're oh. taking most of their laws from the laws of Hammurabi. In I fact, think you mean directly from the mouth of God. But, okay, <laughs> you go ahead and tell me about her Hammurabi. That's fine. So uh, laws of Hammurabi coming from about a thousand years before the covenant code uh, has been written. Uh, there, there's a wonderful book by uh, a scholar, a former Latter-day Saint scholar named David Wright called Inventing God's Law, where he demonstrates, I think convincingly, that the covenant code is borrowing directly from the laws of Hammurabi, showing that the content, even the order that the content is going in, matches the way it's presented in the laws of Hammurabi. And the laws of Hammurabi have a section for what to do should a, uh, a female citizen who is pregnant be injured by a man and either lose her pregnancy or be killed herself. And this matches uh, laws that we find in Middle Assyrian laws and, um, and other ancient Southwest Asian law codes that address 
the exact same scenario. What happens when a man injures a pregnant woman and she either miscarries or is killed? It's always the same two scenarios. And so we have no grounds to say Exodus 21 is presenting two entirely different scenarios. And so I would say that this is a pretty cut and dry situation where it's referring to uh, it's referring to the loss of a fetus as property loss. Right. This as, is not a person. Me, because if it were a person, then we'd be back to life for life, eye exactly. for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But yeah. instead, it's just a fee. It is a monetary uh, reimbursement that's right. required. So, and the husband is considered the owner of this property, and therefore he is the one who uh, assesses the the fine. And so this is a pretty clear indication that, uh, at least in this period, of the composition of the covenant code, a fetus was not considered to be a full person. It was considered closer to property than to a person. And I think the argument is pretty strong that this obtains throughout the entire pregnancy. In other words, the quickening was not the achievement of full personhood. It was birth that was considered the threshold of personhood, at least in this period. 